Hi everyone, Cy Venom here, Partner Solutions Architect at AWS. Now, containers are changing the way the customers are running applications in the cloud. Now, to run container-based workloads on AWS, we offer a number of solutions. ECS, Elastic Container Service, EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service, and the newest one on the list, Red Hat OpenShift Service on AWS, also known as Rosa. So in today's video, I definitely want to cover the advantages of using a managed service like Rosa, but we need to take a step back and understand what exactly OpenShift is and some of the advantages around it. Now, one of the key things about OpenShift is that it's an open source platform from Red Hat that can run basically anywhere. So to start off, we'll kind of build up a stack here. So OpenShift can run on-premises and on AWS. Now let's build on this a little bit. So we need infrastructure, we need compute, and generally, and well, to run OpenShift, you're gonna to need to run this on Red Hat Enterprise Linux core OS. So the infrastructure layer, so basically some virtual machines, whatever the compute is, will have uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux core OS running on top of it. Now, as we go a little bit higher, we'll have Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes is a vanilla open source container orchestration project that OpenShift is based on. And there's gonna be a kind of recurring theme that I go back to repeatedly today through this video. And that's that OpenShift takes complexities that exist with standard container orchestration, like with Kubernetes, and builds abstractions to make those complexities just a little easier and a little bit more tenable. Now, on top of the uh, OpenShift layer, we we're gonna have containers. Now, this is really where uh, customers wanna focus, right? This is where they're building new innovative applications. They wanna focus their attention here, and OpenShift is really gonna help, uh, help them kind of reach their uh, goals. But let's see exactly how it'll do that. So we'll start first by you know, going through two groups of people that work with OpenShift day in and day out, that's developers and operations teams. So let's start with devs. Now, developers, when they work with uh, containers or Kubernetes-based platforms, they need to generally start with code, right? Well, in the world of Kubernetes, you can't just start with code. You actually need to have that code turned into a container image host it on a regist registry somewhere to deploy it into Kubernetes. And out of the box, Kubernetes doesn't really help you do that. OpenShift does. So as a developer starting with code, um, you can bring that to OpenShift. And again, the, the recurring theme here, we're gonna abstract away complexities using OpenShift capabilities like S2I or source to image. Which is gonna take that source code and convert it into a, a container image. And they have builders that do this for a number of different programming languages. But let's say that maybe you're a power user or you already have a container that you wanna deploy. Well, that's fine. You can come to OpenShift directly with the container. There's a host of other approaches as well. Next, you have to actually take this container image and put it in a registry. Now, OpenShift comes bundled with a container registry. So you could go ahead and use that and that's what's kind of automatically configured to deploy a uh, container image into that registry. It's private, it's secure, it's on that OpenShift cluster. Or if you wanted to take advantage of a container registry capability, something like Amazon ECR, Elastic Container Registry, you could do that as well. And that's something that we'll see across the board here. Although OpenShift can be opinionated, they're also flexible and pluggable, so you can take advantage of other services and capabilities, open source projects, that kind of thing. Now, one of my favorite things about OpenShift is the really intuitive user interface. Uh, the experience that they have is just so good for, especially for newcomers uh, to the container space. You know, when you're trying to build that culture of containers within a company, it's really critical to have that, uh, that entrance, that, that barrier of entry to be kind of low. And this is what's great about OpenShift is that everything we've talked about thus far, and kind of some more stuff I'm gonna show you, you can do through the UI in OpenShift. So for example, Maybe the, the customer wants to, let's say we want to set the number of replicas to three for the container that we're deploying to our cluster. Well, we can do that directly in the user interface. But what if I was a Kubernetes power user and I already know how to do this kind of stuff and, I've, uh, and I know how to run the uh, cube, uh, Kubernetes CLI commands called kubectl to do exactly that. 
Well, I could do that because OpenShift is based on top of Kubernetes. I can just as easily go in and run Kubernetes commands. OpenShift honors them, supports them. And I think that's what's really great, whether you're a power user or you're coming new to uh, Kubernetes, both approaches work. Now, what we're going to do here, let's say we go ahead and kick it off. Here, let's say we've got two worker nodes in our Red Hat OpenShift cluster. Essentially, what that means is that's the compute that's going to be actually uh, where our containers are running. So OpenShift and the Kubernetes layer underneath is basically going to schedule out the, uh, the two pieces, the, the, the three containers, rather, that we're going to deploy uh, on, the, on, the, on the cluster. So essentially, we want three replicas. So it'll go ahead and spin up, let's say, one on the first worker node, the second here, and then the last one it chooses, let's say it chooses that first wor uh, worker node. So it's that underlying Kubernetes layer that's doing that scheduling. Um, it's kind of part of what makes Kubernetes so powerful. It allows you to take advantage of multiple uh, sources of compute in this cluster. OK, so we covered the dev workflow. Let's switch gears a little bit, and let's talk about our ops teams. Now, ops have a very critical part to play in, in the container space. They want to do things like setting up new clusters, patching, upgrading. Maybe they want to set up a pipeline for their developers so that they can get easy, iterative workflows. Well, OpenShift identified that. That's a complexity. And we're abstracting it away with a solution that Red Hat calls aptly. Pipelines. Now, Pipelines is based on open source tech time. And this is something that we're going to see with a lot of the capabilities that OpenShift offers, is that they're based on open source capabilities. Now, let's say that a developer pushes code into master, like the master branch of a repository. And so then that's going to kick off the next step where we want to create a container. And then finally, we can't forget this. We want to run tests, right? Because tests are critical. So what that's going to do, let's say a developer pushes code into master, it kicks off this pipeline that the ops team has set up, and then that in turn is going to go and deploy, um, let's say, version two of this application, right? So we'll cross out version one, we'll do a rolling update, and there we go. We've done a full rolling update to move to version two of that application using this pipeline, a really powerful capability that OpenShift exposes directly in the, the, the experience. Next, let's say the operations teams wants to check out the health of the applications. How are things running? Are they running well? Are they crashing often? Is the resource utilization spiking, the CPU memory? Just all sorts of telemetry and analytics to be pulled from the actual cluster, right? So that's something that OpenShift comes bundled with out of the box, solutions like uh, open source projects like Prometheus and Grafana, which really allow you to leverage um, and, and, and like the analytics tools that are part of OpenShift and, and really get that data, those analytics and those insights. It's, it's a critical part of the operations workflow. That's another thing that OpenShift really makes easier. Now, I'm really just scratching the surface of the advantages that OpenShift offers for dev and ops, but I feel like these, were, uh, they, these kind of exemplify some of the really uh, interesting ways that OpenShift has reduced complexities for developers and operations teams. Now, if you're a business leader and you're still watching, let's quickly talk about some of the advantages there. Now, for all of these capabilities, we mentioned that OpenShift is bundling uh, open source projects and capabilities into the platform itself. Well. One of the things that greatly improves your business agility because you're not constantly going out there to the ecosystem, the open source community, third party prov uh, software providers to constantly find uh, solutions to, uh, to challenges, things like logging or analytics or CI CD or, or you know, the source to image capabilities. Those kind of come out of the box, which can really kind of improve the bottom line and improve that pace of innovation. In addition, we talked about how OpenShift runs on premises and on AWS. This is critical, right? Because at the end of the day, we want customers to be able to uh, successfully modernize and migrate to the cloud. So maybe to do that in a step-by-step -step process, they're running OpenShift on-premises, and then they deploy OpenShift on the cloud, and that migration is that much easier. Because OpenShift looks very similar whether you're running it on-premises or in the cloud. But that brings me to my next point, and I promise we're going to talk about Rosa, a Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, which is a managed service. Now, when moving to the cloud, customers expect that some of the heavy lifting is going to be handled for them, right? It's, it's some of the things that they might have been doing on-premises that they want to just get handled. 
These include things like deploying new versions of a cluster, or, uh, or patching, or upgrading, or just general maintenance tasks. So one of the great things about using a managed service like Rosa is that those things are handled for you. Of course, you get to choose when and how those execute, but they are handled for you. Now, that's possible because Rosa is jointly supported by Red Hat and AWS. It's an important distinction here. The, the platform itself is operated by Red Hat SREs. Essentially, what that means is we're able to offer a 99.95% uptime SLA on Rosa. It's one of the key advantages of, of Rosa that we discussed so far. It's you know, automating some of the steps of managing, creating, patching clusters, getting that that's SLA. Uh, in addition, you can, you can really take advantage of native AWS services. So that integration allows you to take advantage of things like, let's say, SageMaker. If you want to add AI or ML to your uh, workloads, your container workloads, or Let's do something simpler, something like S3 for storage requirements. That's simple storage service. So regardless, the, that integration layer is, is something that's very critical when you're using a managed service uh, with, with AWS services. And finally, I want to mention that Rosa is integrated into AWS. It's an experience that starts with the click of a button within the AWS console. So it is fully integrated uh, into the AWS experience. Now, team, I want to thank you for joining me for this quick overview of OpenShift, as well as Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS. If you have any questions, want to learn more, check out some of the resources. And be sure to stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Thank you.